welcome to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, the show that brings you man-on-the-street interviews, celebrity guests, groundbreaking research, and heartwarming stories about the reasons we smile. Our show is also known as everything you've always wanted to know about dentistry, but we're too numb to ask. Hello, I'm General Dentist Dr. Kavitko, and thank you for joining me today. The following views and opinions do not necessarily reflect those of this station, its staff, management, or parent company. To hear a replay of this show or one of the great shows that previously aired, log on to TheReasonsWeSmile.com or iTunes, keyword Dr. Kavitko or The Reasons We Smile. Listeners should not use Dr. Kavitko's comments and advice in place of an actual dental exam. Brighten your life with a smile that shows the professional touch of Dr. Kavitko. Time now for The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Call 459-9769 to discuss your dental issues. Now, here's your host, Dr. Kavitko. Hello, everyone. Welcome to The Reasons We Smile. I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is episode number 626. Thank you so much for joining me. Before we get started, let me remind you, if you'd like to follow me on Twitter, it's at Dr. Kavitko. And if you'd please go to my office Facebook page and like us, that would be awesome. Also, all past episodes, complete with video, are available at TheReasonsWeSmile.com, and we're streaming live on Facebook. Also, I want to let you know that in about 10 minutes, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. The number to call, if you want to pre-program it into your phone, is 614-459-9769. That would be 614-459-9769. All right, so today we are going to be talking with my new associate, Dr. Mark Pagano, now that he's been here for a while, and so I want to find out how things are going. So, hey, Doc, how are things going? <laughs> things are going well. I'm really enjoying the practice. <laughs> okay. So what's the biggest difference between this practice, Dr. Kavitko and Associates, and the other office, which we won't name? <laughs> I would say one of the best parts is that we have a nice large staff, you know, a lot of nice new equipment that we get to use. And it's nice that we're keeping up with dentistry as it's progressing. And so it's really nice um, being in an office that's uh, well equipped and, you know, well staffed with people who are making sure that everything's running nice and smooth. Okay. And you're talking about things like, is the chair broken? Is this broken? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. It doesn't seem like there's any loose ends in this office, which I really appreciate. And if one is found, it's fixed right away. I was going to say, the minute I know something's not right, I want it fixed because we might need it, right? Yeah. No, it's really impressive <laughs> how fast you are in getting things fixed. I just ordered a couple more implant drills today. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, well, that, okay. Well, that's good to hear. I, I guess I thought all offices were like that, but I'm glad to hear that maybe we're doing things a little better than some. Oh, yeah. No, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, another big difference, I would say, is the patient population. Before, I was at a Medicaid office, and basically, we're just working with the different patients that are... What would you say their, uh, their understanding of dentistry is different? Uh, yeah, their understanding of dentistry is different, and I would say that they want to get the best treatment that's possible just because their insurance can kind of pay for it. Oh, okay. So more insurance driven. They're more insurance driven. They want what their insurance covers. And so they want what they think is good care, but only if the insurance is going to cover it. Anything other than that, they're kind of like, eh, I don't want that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That would be a good synopsis? Yeah, that's a good synopsis of it. <laughs> okay. I'm not trying to put words in your mouth. No, 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 no. That was perfect. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, we want to attract people who care about their mouth, care about their smile, their gums, everything, right? Because I've said many, many times, you use your, your smile your teeth, your gums, with every laugh, every smile, every chew, every word, and every kiss. <laughs> no, that's a good way to say it, yeah. You're definitely using it for everything. We didn't leave anything out, though, but that's a lot, right? Yeah, I think that was everything. <laughs> so every time you eat a meal, thank your dentist. Thank yourself for brushing. Every time you have a kiss with your significant other, you know? Yeah, and they don't complain about... Bad breath. Yeah, bad breath. <laughs> yeah, you got to thank your dentist for that, too. Right. I talked to a woman yesterday, relatively new to us, and she asked me about the bad breath. And I, I guess it's okay to go off on a tangent, right? Because yeah. that's what we do. Yeah, I'm okay with tangents, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Is She was trying to figure out how to talk to somebody who has bad breath, by the way. And she said, someone in my life, she didn't really say who, I couldn't tell if it was her boyfriend or her brother or her or somebody. I came to kind of think it might be her boyfriend, but anyway, she said that his breath really smells. It smell, you can smell when he walks in the room, and how would you go about 
saying something to that person and asked if I'd ever had to do it. And I have done it, but not to a loved one. I've done it to patients. Oh, yeah. No, I've definitely done it to patients as well. It's crazy that some of them have bad breath and don't ask about it. So you always have to kind of have that conversation if, you know, something they notice um, and, you know, what they are, have been doing to fix it. Right. And I uh, usually close the door and make sure it's just me and the patient. Yeah. No, that's good, too. Yeah. Right. And by the way, our office has a door in every operatory, which is different than almost every other office that you'll see, right? Most of them have no doors or just a big room with chairs in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My whole office was very open. You can hear uh, from operatory one all the way down to operatory 10. You can hear what was going on. So it's nice to be able to close the door. I'm sure patients love that. I know they do because they've already asked several times to close it. Have they really? And especially if you're a denture wearer and you don't want everybody to know you wear dentures, we can close the door and you don't have to worry about people walking down the hall seeing you without your teeth in. Mm, yeah, no, that's perfect. So getting back to this woman, so I told her, I said, and I've also had to tell dental students, because I was teaching at the University of Ohio State, and that wasn't a terrible conversation to have, because I felt like it was really doing them a big favor. If you're going to be a dentist, you need to be aware that you have bad breath, and uh, you know, here are some suggestions. So for example, I don't eat onions, and I don't eat garlic, unless there'll be about three days from the time I will eat it till I'll be in the dental office. Do you do anything like that? Oh, no, I didn't even know that it takes three days in order to get out of your mouth. <laughs> I love onions and garlic. <laughs> but, I mean, I always make sure that I come in with a clean mouth, and if I eat anything during lunch, I make sure, you know, I'm not smelling like salami going into the operatory. Right. Now, there is something I, I like to say, my least favorite odor is minty onion breath. If somebody goes and drinks, you know, have a little bit of scope on top of their onion and they think it's all gone. <laughs> I haven't smelled that one yet, but I have to keep an eye out for it. Okay. So anyway, so, but then when I realized it was a loved one, I said, okay, well, you know, some of the things that we need to go over are what makes bad breath. And I said, more often than not, I said, well, first of all, there's this one odor. Every dentist, every dental hygienist, every dental assistant knows it. We can't describe it. But we all call it perio breath, right? Yeah, perio breath, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's very distinct. Yeah, and she asked me what it was. Tell me what it is. Um, it basically, when you have a perio disease, um, you have a different, different bacteria that kind of localizes under your gums, and um, they just produce a very, very foul odor. And it just is, has to do that there's a shift in population from um, the bacteria that you had to these um, bacteria that produce uh, that, that odor from having the gum disease. It's basically the anaerobic ones, right? Yeah, anaerobic ones, yep. Okay, so the ones above the gum line, they need oxygen to live and breathe, and the ones below the gum line, they, they live where there is no oxygen or very little, and they smell different. Yeah, they smell putrid. <laughs> <laughs> so I showed her a whole series of x-rays where there's a bunch of gunk on the teeth. Uh, I called it barnacles because it looks like barnacles. Calculus and plaque and bits of food. And then I explained to her that, think about, have you ever gone down a back alley behind a restaurant in the summer and smelled their dumpster? You can smell it a mile away, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. The ones behind, say, uh, I don't know, the ones behind a clothing store don't smell. No, they do not smell. Yeah, no, that's true. <laughs> so the point is, is rotten food stinks. And if you have little pieces of food down in these pockets, down in where you have mixed in with the barnacles, it's going to stink to high heaven. And that's what basically we're talking about. So anyway, I gave her all of this. I showed her what gum disease was, what periodontal disease was, uh, what the calculus looks like on an x-ray, and encouraged her to basically have her loved one give us a call so we could do a set of x-rays and figure out if that's what they have. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that sounds like the appropriate uh, treatment for it. And I'm guessing the same person has a stayed away from the dentist for a while, and so they could even have a big cavity, like a big hole in a molar where food is collecting, even worse than just having the barnacles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How long does it normally take you to reverse somebody's breath that's that bad? Oh, this is such a cool story because I told the patient this. We had this gentleman in and actually showed her his x-rays where I was blanking out the name, you know? And so what I did was I did, I had to extract a few teeth. I had him in for one visit where we did IV, was an IV or oral sedation. And we did root planning and curatage on every tooth. We did periodontal surgery on every tooth. We extracted the teeth that I don't think uh, were savable. And when he came back in two weeks, the breath odor was completely gone, perfectly healthy. His gums are pink. It was awesome. Wow, that's very impressive. <laughs> that's amazing. I'm sure he was very grateful. Well, keep in mind, he didn't know he had bad breath. 
No way. Well, we had to tell them, but no, people don't know they have bad breath because your the olfactory sense, our mm-hmm. our odor, our nose, it gets tired really fast. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they just get used to smelling it to the point where they don't even notice that it's there. Exactly. Yeah, like you put cologne on in the morning, right? Yeah. Yep. Can you smell it on yourself right now? No, unless if I grab my clothes and literally put it right up to my nose, then I would smell it. But no, I can't just smell it coming off of me. Yeah, it's probably still there. You know, same thing. I don't know if I still if my cologne is still noticeable. But when I walk into a room, people tell me that they like my cologne, so it must be. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, that's a very good compliment to hear as well. <laughs> but I don't smell it. <laughs> yeah, no, I get that as well. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, okay, that was a good tangent to get off on, though, because this is important, and there are people. So you. If you're listening, you could be that one that has this bad breath we're talking about, especially if you haven't been to a dentist in a long time. And by the way, this gentleman I'm talking about, who we got fixed up in a couple weeks, he happens to be single. I'm thinking that's not by coincidence. I'm thinking a woman wouldn't want to get anywhere near that. Yeah, I mean, if you can smell it when somebody walks in a room, I think that that's kind of, you know, a deal breaker for sure. Yeah. I mean, just teeth in general are normally a deal breaker for a lot of people, but like mixed in with bad putrid breath, I assume that that would kind of turn a lot of women off. Exactly. So, and that's what my patient said the other day about that uh, when I asked her about who wants to kiss that. So anyway, so you know what? That's probably going to be a good uh, topic for Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, right? Yeah. We'll make it that. So if you're listening, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. And the question is going to center around perio breath. What is it and uh, what do we do about it? Okay. All right. But before we do Dr. Kavitko's question of the day, we'd like you to listen to this. This station will not be held liable for any contesting during The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko. Participation in the contest allows Dr. Kavitko to record and broadcast your name and call. One winner per household, prizes are non-transferable, cannot be substituted, and are subject to taxes and fees. This station cannot be responsible for the inability to enter the contest, whether due to equipment malfunction or telephone difficulties. All decisions of Dr. Kavitko concerning this contest or eligibility are final. And now it's time for Dr. Kavitko's Question of the Day. All right, remember, you're going to have a chance to win free flowers from DeSantis Florist. I'll give you the number right now, 614-459-9769. The question is, which of the following are contributors to that putrid smelling breath we call perio breath? A. Holes in your teeth caused by decay. B. Pieces of food caught between your teeth or below the gum line. C. Plaque buildup on your teeth. Uh, D. Calculus or tartar on your teeth. Or E. All of the above. All right, the winner's going to receive those free flowers from DeSantis Florist. They'll be delivered to your place of business this Tuesday afternoon. The number to call is 614-459-9769. That's 614-459-9769. So go ahead and call now. You won't believe it though. I want to hear your mind. And there's nothing else in the world tonight. She said people don't take the time. Hey, people don't take the time. Hey, what's going on? It's Keith Carlos, winner of America's Next Top Model and star of Chocolate City 2. You can look for my smile courtesy of Dr. Kavicko on the CBS television network where I play Danny on the hit soap opera, The Bold and the Beautiful. Stay tuned to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavicko, the world's most interesting dentist. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavicko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile radio and roadshow. Did you know that you no longer need to visit several different dental professionals to get more complete dental care? We handle everything from cleanings and orthodontics to restoration, implants, and smile makeovers, all in my office. Get the most advanced technology and procedures available today. It's more complete dentistry. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. Hi, I'm Johanna, and I've been a dental patient at Dr. Kavicko and Associates for over 10 years. I would really recommend Dr. Kavicko for your family's dental care. They're friendly. They're always there to help me. I feel like family when I walk in the door. It's clean. It's comfortable. Even if I have to bring my kids, they have a great playroom for them. I know when I'm with Dr. Kavicko, they are taking that extra time to make sure that I'm going to be the healthiest I can be. They've been great. I love them. Call Dr. Kavicko and Associates today, 614 262 
888-5588. Hi, this is Richard Simmons. Dr. Kavitko's here, and he's going to help you with all of your problems. Uh, are your teeth yellow? He can fix that. Are you missing a tooth? He can put a new one in. How is that? <laughs> That's very good. Thank you, Richard. back. We're doing Dr. Kavitko's question of the day. Okay. Hey, Dr. Pagano, help me out here. Uh, tell me, um, why don't you pick a number between one and four so we know which caller is going to be the winner of those flowers from DeSantis Florist. Uh, let's reward the first caller this time. Caller number one. Okay. Uh, we have, unless they don't have the right answer, then we'll go to caller number two, I guess. Okay. <laughs> All right. So as it turns out, caller number one is Sarah. Hey, Sarah, how are you today? Good, how are you? I'm well, I'm well. Thank you for asking. Do you have the answer to Dr. Kavitko's question of the day? It is E, all of the above. That's right. Have you ever heard of perio breath? I think, yeah, I have. Have you ever walked into a room and smelled it on somebody? Not really, but <laughs> That's good. I always try to brush my teeth. Good for you. You're lucky, too, that you haven't had yeah. to smell that. Anyway, hey, stay on the line. We want to get the information uh, as to where we can send you those flowers, okay? Thank you. You're very welcome. And the other folks that called in, Hammond and others, uh, please try again next week. Okay, so I think it's time to go back to Dr. Pagano. All right, congratulations to our caller. Thank you so much for calling in. Those of you who didn't win, please call back next week. All right. Okay, if you're just joining us, I'm Dr. Kavitko. This is The Reasons We Smile. It's episode number 626. Really appreciate you joining me today. And with me is Dr. Mark Pagano. He's our new associate, and we're kind of getting his opinion on some of the similarities and differences between his previous office and our office, the new office for him. And it's working out really well. We're getting great reviews. And so let's talk a little more here with Dr. Pagano. Okay, so Doc, tell me what has been maybe the coolest procedure procedure you've done since you've been here or maybe the coolest patient uh well the coolest procedure i've done in you know the short month that i've been here uh, was probably working on uh, the patient the other day we did four uh, new anterior crowns on her front teeth they were all jagged from um she grinds her teeth and so she has real big jagged edges on her front four teeth and she was okay with keeping it like that for a while but you know once we brought it up and said that we can fix it she became uh really interested in it and so uh, we prepped four nice new crowns for her and gave her some nice temporaries before she I believe she was going on vacation for a while um, and she'll come back and you know she'll have those crowns ready for her but it's really nice to just give somebody a new front smile because they really respond well to those as well right and she also had her teeth whitened if I remember and so we started with whitening and then we matched the new porcelain to the new color and I remember her teeth because they were so paper thin you could see through at the biting edge right and they were starting to chip yeah oh yeah yeah they were paper thin they, they were like very 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 translucent. Yeah, from biting, uh, from grinding. So, and then what about, um, what's the coolest procedure you've actually seen done here? Uh, the coolest I've seen probably has been... Um when I, you know, really got to in there with you when you were IV sedating a patient, just because um, since I'm going to get my certification for that uh, here soon, uh, it was really cool to, you know, ask you a bunch of questions as you, you know, went along and actually get to see it, what I was studying um, firsthand. And, um, you know, watch, I think you, you placed some implants and some, and did a couple crowns as well. Yeah. Yeah. I think I remember that visit. So, uh, and that's a good point. Uh, Dr. Pagano is going to receive his, uh, uh, IV sedation, uh, course, his training this upcoming week. So he's going to be out of the office for a week. I'm going to have to survive without him. And, and what we want to do is we, I want to talk to him a little bit about what you've been actually you've been doing some pre-training right the, this course it's not just show up and we're going to teach you everything you need to know they're having you study before ever coming uh yeah so it's total it's about 80 hours of continued education so it actually fulfills four years worth of the amount of education of uh, continued education classes that we're supposed to have but so i had to do 40 hours of work before i show up next week and it's in uh, dayton ohio at an anesthesiologist hospital and um, we'll be doing around 40 hours next week as well i believe working on actual patients 
Okay. No, that's really cool. So when we come back from the break, I'm going to ask you some of the things that they're, they've pre-taught you. What kind of topics are you studying? What has maybe been the biggest surprise that you uh, came upon as you were training for this? And um, Because I'm pretty interested. And then, of course, we might have you on the show after you do this to kind of give us a, an idea of how it was, how it went, and, and that sort of thing. Okay? So, But what we're going to do is we're going to go to a break now. When we come back, we're going to find out from Dr. Pagano what was was the pre-training like for uh, intravenous sedation. You're listening to The Reasons We Smile with Dr. Kavitko, episode 626, and we'll be right back. You can take me as I am, not just a little bit. I don't know who to be. I'm a paper cup, baby, of the sea. I know you see it too, because you're too much for me. This is Clark Kellogg. Stay tuned for more of Dr. Kavitko. Estás escuchando con Dr. Kawiko aquí en su sesión favorita. Hi, I'm Dominique Weigert. Like what you hear? Why not use the show to promote your product or service by becoming a sponsor? Call 614-262-9588 to learn how. That's 614-262-9588. Call now. Hi, I'm Dr. Kavitko, general dentist and host of The Reasons We Smile Radio and Roadshow. I've been honored to help several famous people get a perfect smile, like Keith Carlos and Dominique Rygaard from America's Next Top Model and Ted the Golden Voice Williams from right here in Columbus. Isn't it time you had a celebrity smile? It costs less than you might think, and most of the time, it can be done in one visit. A new smile can make a world of difference. Visit worldsmostinterestingdentist.com for more info about Dr. Kavitko. I'm Grandpa, and I go to Dr. Kavitko, and I still have all my teeth. Real ones. Where's my glasses? <laughs> Okay, we're back. This is Dr. Kavitka. With me is Dr. Mark Pagano. And Dr. Pagano is about to spend a week at an anesthesiology hospital learning to do IV sedation in the dental office like I've been doing since uh, 1985. And he's got a little catching up to do. <laughs> yeah, a lot of catching up to do. <laughs> and I'll be curious to see when you get your permit what number it is because uh, my permit is number 28. Wow, that's impressive. <laughs> I think your number might be 560 or 600 when you actually get it. Let me know, though, because I'd like to know how many people after me have become certified. Oh, yeah, no, I'm really interested. To I'll definitely be telling the doctors around that my, my dentist was number 28. <laughs> <laughs> and it could have been sooner. I was a little slow in getting my paperwork in. I bet I might have been 10 or something. If I, yeah. I'm shocked that there's only maybe been a, a couple hundred since then. Oh, well, like 500, five, 550 or so. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm interested to see what my number is. Okay. So tell me the kinds of things. First of all, was it a surprise to you that there was all this pre-training? And what, what was the training? Uh, no, I expected a lot of pre-training. Anytime you're putting somebody under, you have to be very aware of how, what their current uh, medical state is, You know how the drugs will affect any kind of diseases that they currently have, how drugs interact with each other, with medication they're currently uh, taking. So I expected and I really wanted a lot of training. I wanted it to be difficult and really you know, push me so I know what I'm doing when I'm putting somebody under. Right. Now, just to clarify, we, we're not really putting people under the way they think. You can't, you can't see the quotations that he did with his fingers. So we're doing what is called uh, IV conscious sedation. It's uh, technically moderate conscious sedation. So, yeah, deep yeah. is one level past it. Okay. But when I tell people that, sometimes they go, they go, well, then I don't want it because I don't want to be awake. And I go, no, 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 you're not awake. You're not even aware, but your subconscious can respond. So if something gets stuck in your throat or your airway, you're going to cough and you're going to let somebody know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It has to, the difference between them is that you have, you can respond to, you know, somebody saying, Hey, open your mouth more. Or, um, and another difference is that you can maintain your own airway. So we don't have to do any intubation to make sure that you're breathing. You're able to breathe yourself. Right. And when we say open your mouth and you tell them they will, that makes them think I'm too awake, but uh, you'd have to see it folks to know what we're talking about. When we say open 
open your mouth, you go really, really slow. It's like, okay, there was a message sent to the brain. The brain's sending a message to your bottom t- jaw, and it's starting to move a little bit. And sometimes I'll just say, can you open a little bigger? And I don't need you to open a little bigger. I'm just doing it to make sure that you you're st- you have that gag reflex intact. Yeah, it's very strange because, you know, the patient will be sitting there snoring, and then you'll give them, like, a command, and then they'll slowly open their mouth but continue snoring right after. <laughs> Yeah, so you are out of it. You're just not under general. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so now what kind of, are there any specific things that they've been teaching you through your uh, webinars and your online training? Uh, Yeah, just the pharmacology of all the different drugs that we are using, Uh, a lot of physiology as well about breathing and heart, Um, you know, just complications that could go wrong. Uh, We have advanced cardiac life support that we have to learn so we can read, you know, um, an EKG and basically all the equipment that we have that you are, you know, that's ensuring that you are uh, breathing properly and, you know, that the procedure is happening as safely as possible. Um, And then we had to do a, um, like a four hour live video chat with uh, an anesthesiologist just to, um, you know, answer any questions and make sure that we're understanding everything and he kind of just helps, you know, tie everything together. Was he asking you questions? Uh, he was asking us some questions as well, yeah. Just make, making sure that, you know, well, we were listening to him and he wasn't kind of using those four hours to <laughs> in vain. <laughs> okay. So you've been out of school for a year and a half, almost a year and three quarters now. Is this, uh, is this taxing? Are you glad you're doing it so soon after dental school? What if you were doing this in 15 years? Would you still be so sharp that you'd be able to grasp it so quickly? Uh, no, actually, even just a year out of dental school, like, you kind of get that motivation back to um, continue continue learning. It takes a little bit out of you right in the beginning, right after dental school. You just want to, you know, get back into working. But then once you kind of get into the field and realize how much you still can learn, you know, about new procedures, it kind of rejuvenated me and gave me, you know, some life to, I, I was excited to learn. Okay. But it wasn't hard to learn. No, it wasn't hard. No, 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 no. Okay. I was it might be for somebody that hasn't been in school though for a long time. Yeah, for somebody that hadn't been in school for a long time, yeah, it might be a little bit difficult to get back in it. But, uh, no, I was excited to, you know, start learning again. Yeah, and every free minute he's in there on his computer studying these quizzes and the information they're giving him, which I'm happy to see and I compliment you on being so diligent about this and not just taking it for granted. Yeah, 